Hello, my name is Ethan, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile Arch Nemesis League 3.17 Siege of the Atlas. In this episode, I'm going to be going over my favorite stuff from the live reveal and the patch notes. I've put it all together into this presentation, so I hope you guys can enjoy. Also, uh, if you guys didn't know, I did the live reveal reaction co-stream thing, so you guys can go watch that on my on my stream, the VOD, if you want to see the live thing. But this is now my summary. It's nothing like the live reaction, but now this is if you wanted all the information, let's go through it, and I'll try to go through it pretty quickly and enjoy it. Here we go. Boom. Wait, wrong button. Uh, uh, we'll start it off with the Atlas passive tree. What? Atlas passive tree. Yeah. So they deleted the, um, they deleted the regions and the watchstones and, and then we have an Atlas passive tree now and it affects the whole tree. Uh, we don't have the whole tree like to see it all, but we've seen some of them like this for example unique map bosses have 10% chance to add a free random craft to your map device so you could t 10 maps to earn a free ritual So this would be like a ritual is 13 chaos on the map device. So that would be like 1.3 chaos per map d boss uh, in this one mod that's really cool maps dropped in areas have 12% chance to be one tier higher 12% one tier higher. Hmm. Pretty strong. There's a lot of uh, really powerful mods. We've noticed Maven in the back, and uh, this is the other boss, and this background looks really cool, and I can't wait to see this thing. Uh, we have, yeah, we'll, we'll get a whole, P I'll make a POB for this probably too. <laughs> Reworked Atlas mechanics. So, no more regions. No more watch zones. Only four void stones. End game all T16. All. Only awakened sextants, Nem3 Rip. Tradable sextant mods like Bestiary Chaos Orb Storage, so you can use this to store a sextant mod off of a void zone and then you could trade it. Like the one chaos bestiary. Um you have twelve favored map slots along the side, and it has a ten times drop rate for the maps, uh per favorited map slot up to hundred and twenty times, and it's unlocked as early as completing a T sixteen map. And then, rest in peace, Zana. Kirak replaces Zana and more. You can run Kirak missions like Zana, but you don't find him in maps. Daily missions from highest map completed in the league, instead of daily. And then, Kirak Zana missions uh, can now include Conqueror maps, Ritual, Expedition, and Monstrous Treasure Strongbox map, in addition of normal maps like the Guardian Harvest, like the normal stuff, this is additional four new ones, Conk maps, Ritual, Expedition, Monstrous Treasure. Uh, like buying maps from Zana, you can buy maps from Kirak, but he offers maps with powerful implicit containing extra league mechanics or loot. Check out your Kirak shop constantly as he refreshes following Zana's rules. Conqueror maps added to the drop table similar to Guardian and Kirak shop missions. So you can get Conqueror maps from map bosses. Um, like how you get the Guardians. Uh, the Shaper and Elder Guardians. You can all, you can now get Conqueror maps from map bosses. Also from the Kirak shop. Kirak mission. Um, and then the Conquerors drop fragments. Four fragments to fight Awakener 8. Also... Uh, there's a Conqueror or Maven Invitation, so you can do a four-way Conqueror Maven Invitation. And as you play the game, you find these singular scouting reports and otherworldly scouting reports, which can re-roll Kirax missions. And it can include Breach Stones, unique maps, and powerful things like this. Ridiculously strong. Kirak! Who needs Zana, dude? Uh, this is insane. You can get a plus two amulet without influence. So so then there's like three thi well, a billion things to think about. Fractured, because normally you wouldn't be able to fracture because of influence. So one of these mods could be fractured. So you can find a fractured plus one all skills gems or plus one all lightning skill gems. Or you could do this with harvest. Okay. Synthesis. You can have a new implicit. How hard will this be to craft plus two? Also, so then if it's hard to craft, if it isn't hard to craft... You could do this, and a Conqueror's Exalted Orb. You could get another. You could get an influence on this. You could still get an influence mod like reduce mana and the plus two. 
Gee, this is ridiculous. I love it. And this is because it's harder to get influence items, apparently, after the Conquerors being moved. Uh, Awaken support gems. They don't drop from Conquerors or Awakener. They drop from Maven and Maven invitations now. So they're still core. Eldritch Implicit Modifier. This is new. There, do I have a thingy to show it? I did not get a picture of that. There's these new currencies. Um, and there's two final new bosses. The Searching Exarch and the Eater of Worlds. Uh, Ember and Itcher. Uh, if you go to this page, it shows part two. Ember is Searching Exarch. And Itcher is, or Iker, is Eater of Worlds. Okay, so Ember, it, Iker, Ember, Iker, and it matches up perfectly as I wrote it here. Uh, you can add implicits. Um, you can have two implicits, but here it only has one, uh, but only one from each type. So one Ember, one Iker. Uh, example, if you use Ember twice, it will re-roll the implicit. It will not give you two Ember. But if you use Iker after using the Ember, it will add a second mod, new implicit, a second implicit because there's now two different ones. Uh, there are six tiers of each mod, and four tradable currencies, lesser, greater, grand, exceptional. Obviously, lesser is the worst, exceptional is the best. Uh, to get the final two tiers, they're from using an orb of conflict, which raises one of the mods while lowering the other one, randomly. And also, if it decides to lower a lesser mod, then it gets deleted. And um, by lesser, it means, let's say there is a tier 4 and a tier 3. The tier 4 is apparently, in this case, the opposite way of normal tier rolls. Tier 4 is better than tier 3. So tier 4, um, if it gets, so if the 3 gets lessered to a 2, it would just get deleted instead of lessering. Um, and if you lesser the big one, uh, it's fine. Yeah pretty crazy so there's rng to get this to the sixth tier because you can only actually craft four with the currency exceptional and you have to get it to six using orbs of conflict which can then delete the mods um so this will be pretty interesting the basic thing is that uh the lower thing you can have like four and three so exceptional and grand and now exceptional will be the greater and the grand is the lesser and you could use that for other crafting. Eldritch Implicit Modifier Part 2. Dominating or lesser. Eldritch Implicits is very simple. As I just kind of explained it. It's just based on which one is bigger and smaller. So for the new Eldritch Chaos Orb. If Searching Exarch. Uh, which is Ember. Is dominating. It's the higher tier. The Chaos Orb will re-roll the prefixes. And Eater of Worlds dominating for re-rolling suffixes. And then this is just the same thing for the Exalted Orb and Annulment. And so Searching Exart, Ember, Exalted Orb means prefix. Um, and if it's Eater of Worlds dominating the suffixes, uh, dominating uh, Ick or Iker, then you get re-roll suffixes, yeah. Um, but in this case, yeah, you could remove a suffix or you could add a suffix with Exalted Orb. Um, and so pretty much if you had modified the implicits to your dominating using your exact uh, exceptional grand without worrying about orbs of conflict yet, just four and three or even less two and one, you could go with the lowest tier possible. You could actually craft items using these currencies with the chaos orb and the exalted and the annulment. Pretty cool. Arch Nemesis League. So this is the new league mechanic. Uh, we have 60 new rare monster mods. You can build a rare-like metamorph. Print loot. It's similar to a ritual because of a statue. And there are four encounters instead of one. And it gets exponentially harder and more rewarding as you do more. You can combo parts to get sick boosts. Headhunter doesn't work with these rare monsters. So it starts with one. Then you put a second one. Then you put a third one. Then you put a fourth one. And that's four encounters. Um, and you would get the rewards from the first one four times, then this second one three times, then this one two times, because it repeats. And so you could put your best ones first, and then also you want to put the best one that synergizes with the ones you're going to put after it. So you could already plan the four that you're going to put in, in the case that you're going to do it. And then we figured out that you have 64 slots of storage, 
um, per character or per account per character whatever so you could actually store up as much as you possibly can and then start comboing them because combos are how you get the sick boosts because they've admitted that there are combos and synergies that you definitely want to do them as soon as you figure out that they exist that's what they put and then they were like if you could abuse it of being able to trade and do tft you would so they had to block all that shit and make it so you had to do it just yourself pinnacle bosses so it's just like this part this stuff you have to um you, there's two new bosses searching exarch and eater of worlds and then there's the tinier bosses black star and infinite hunger so big boss big boss Searching Exart, Eater of Worlds, and then this is Infinite Hunger and Black Star, I believe. Uh, two new influences ma in maps. So Eater of Worlds and Searching Exart, Influence. Choose your influence. More monsters, closer the influence is to you. All four new bosses are fought by getting the respective key. The key is tradable. If you want to get the key yourself, though, you have to farm map bosses at the highest tier with that respective influence and you'll drop the tradable key. They can be rolled normal, magic, or rare for more loot and difficulty. It's literally like, um, it's like doing an invitation or farming up a conqueror and then doing it. But in this case, and then it's like when they fix the conquerors of allowing you to roll your conquerors and how they also made it so that, um, you have the key, which is the invitation, which is, yeah. It's similar with with Maven where you could get the invitations and then fight them um, But you can't roll the normal invitations. You can only roll the special bigger tier boss invitation. So this one's interesting They're allowing us to do it more. Oh my god. This is so cool too. new Eldritch altar So depending on the influence uh, that you have because there's two different influences you'll get corresponding mods to match the influence there's different ones for the different influences, but basically, kill monsters in one of the two new influences. Easy alters, easy boosts, easy profits. And as you can see here, map, boss, player, and there's also monster apparently. Uh, so map, boss, hits, always shock. Whew. But you get an extra Eldritch currency, or you could do player, games, grass, queen, tentacles, while stationary. Just don't stand still, bro. And then increase quant. That's pretty good. Uh, here we have four new uniques. So I wanted to show this one. Ceaseless Feast is really cool because chance to inflict corrosion on hit is new. You can put this on an animate guardian with a vulnerability on hit. And then this will reduce the enemy's armor and evasion. Then it will also generate endurance charges and frenzy charges for this. Holy shit, this is sick. What a cool glove. Um, don't care. This uh, jewel is pretty cool because... It says that life would be lost by taking damage is in life that would be lost by taking damage is instead reserved until you take no damage for two seconds. So you don't actually need regen. You don't need recovery. You don't need leech. It's all just this. Don't get hit for two seconds and all of your life is gained back. Yep. Uh, unreserved. And actually, I pointed out that with this reserving, you can use guardian. Because when you reserve life, you actually gain armor. It's not that good, but 29% more life and you get rid of all energy shield. And this could be really, 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 really powerful. Uh, it probably is really, really, really powerful. Um, I'm, a, I'm imagining a build where you build twice as much life and absolutely zero recovery. And you use it like an energy shield build with... Um, it's kind of similar to the energy shield recharge, kind of, because it's more like you have a battery and as long as you just don't lose the battery, you can't die um, and you have to recharge the battery by getting away from monsters and getting away, yeah, getting out to let it recharge. It's like a energy shield recharge because it stops when you take damage. Yeah. Hmm. Until you take no damage for two seconds and it's two seconds. That's a long time. Uh, it sounds really hard. Uh, and then there was also another thought of where does this drop from and it, will it come from the uh, the jewel? It, we get uh, watch, uh, prismatic jewels from a Adzerian's reward divination card. And we have to hope that it doesn't mess that up and if it is a shitty jewel. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused by it if it's good at all yet. It looks really cool. It, it blows my mind, but I don't know if it's good. 
Ashes of the Stars is really powerful. This is a disgusting AMI, and it reminds me of every AMI and every Aya build I've ever tried to make. Levels, mana reservation, quality, yep, yep, yep. This all sounds fucking great. Quality on auras for area of effect, quality on cool alt quality gems that still exist that aren't auras. Yep. They're skill gems though. You see the skill gems. Very important. Not all support gems, so it's yeah. Uh then we have this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Two jewels. You combo them. Requires class witch. Needs both of allocates profane bloom as a necro. You don't necro is irrelevant. You could be a um, elementalist you could be the occultist technically or the necro as long as you're a witch and you have two of these with the same thing boom e easy ascendancy so pretty much i pointed out that this is two jewel sockets and you get a fifth ascendancy point of any ascendancy of your class it might be expensive we'll see i think it's going to be pretty expensive especially for really good ones such as witch Profane Bloom, explosions in any build, uh, that's a witch. That's crazy. Like, a necro can be exploding Profane Bloom just for cursing Pro Profane Proxy. Pretty sick. <clears throat> patch notes. Okay, this part... This We're into patch notes now. <clears throat> so I've just put the important stuff, and this would be, like, the new stuff that was actually additional to the manifesto. And I found really cool. And instead of just repeating the same stuff we already know from the old video. It is now possible to have multiple blight encounters in a single area. Possibly the greatest change in the ent entire patch notes. This has been multiple seasons waiting. Finally. Finally, dude. Think about the all sextants are now awakened sextants. There's no more elevated sextants. So everybody rolls awakened sextants. People can sell sextants. So you can buy a sextant that's stored like the bestiary and it can have blight encounter so then you have blight encounters on your sextants then you have blight scarabs um uh, maybe you could get more blight and then the natural blight too and uh, maybe there's some blight on the map device i mean on the atlas passives map atlas passives yeah and then i also noticed this one blight ravage maps now have 40 percent of the quant affecting the blight chest count instead of 20% from like the normal one. So it's double the value of the base map showing you how see blight ravage maps needed a buff. Um, yep. And then they added these maps and deleted those maps. So you could take a look at those if you want, but pretty much the main one I liked is we gained back burial chambers and, uh, what was the other one? Uh, jungle Valley's pretty cool. I don't mind Iceberg. I like City Square. Um, uh, I, I like Volcano a bit. Some of these are pretty decent. Mess is pretty quick. I think it's like the quickest map. And then that we lost. Alleyways. Oh no. Leyline. Lighthouse goes boom. Goodbye. Get the fuck out of here. Park is gone. Rip. Uh, and also Spider Layer. No. Uh, and then there's also Tropical Forest. Rip. Waterways. Rip. Wharf. Oof. Okay, continued. Patch notes, part two. Influence shield prefix modifiers that grant increases to maximum resistance should have been added to the core shield modifier pool and can no longer roll on influence shields. The reason why this one's really big is you buy one off trade with max res and spell suppression. And then you add an Eldritch Implicit Modifier on this non-influence shield. I don't know what the new modifiers will be for shields, but I'm just saying that obviously you already notice Max Res, Spell Suppression, Life Res, Crazy Shield, and then you add an Implicit to it, maybe two. And you can reroll the mods with maybe an all or Exalted with those things because of the Implicits. Yeep, we'll see how expensive those are. Buffed Maven Drops. Um, so this one is the standout. The rest makes sense, but Doppelganger Guys. People were using this on their Animate Guardian to keep it alive, and I wasn't. 15 to 25% was the previous. Now it's 30 to 40. 
Holy shit. That is way better. <laughs> wow. And what the fuck is this? Legacy of Fury, I have to look. Because I didn't notice that that says some weird shit. Scorch. P P O E. As an elemental ailment associated with fire, it reduces their fire res. Elemental res based on the fire damage of the hit. How, do, how does the nearby enemies are scorched? How does that work with an automatic application of scorch? Like for the shield, scorch enemies when you block their damage. This sounds really, really, really powerful. Um, Legacy of Fury. Is that... What is that? The boot. Oh my god. Dude, the... Okay, so maybe a new animate guardian boot as well from Maven because of this buff. Nearby enemies are scorched. Is actually really cool. Um, and then the patch notes part 3. Uh, make atlas base types into regular item drops but have a lower chance to drop. So this is bone helmet, convoking wand, now drop anywhere. But they don't drop... Um, but they don't drop as much. And then prophecy's dead. They added a Ziri's reflection to Uber at Ziri drop table. There's a bunch of other prophecy changes to obviously fix what they've taken out. Um, some of the stuff is removed. A lot of it makes sense. I wasn't too worried about it. At series reflection added to Uber at series drop table is super sick though. That's my takeaway. Buffed act two monsters AI life added new monster types, um, which means you're gonna get goats with molten shells that are gonna blow you up in act two, and then resistances can no longer be reduced by more than a hundred percent. So I think this means that Doriani's prototype has a cap of a negative a hundred. And then I, I started thinking about the new unique that allows us to go negative 76 elemental res. And there's the um, threat of hopes and all these items that allow you to go negative res. This is the reason why they don't want you to be able to do this. So does that mean that you just stack all of them and after negative 100 they have no downside? So it's just pure upside? And of course that's broken. And it's obvious as soon as you see that they capped it at 100 which is really weird. And it only makes sense because of Doriani's prototype existing. But really, they should have just nerfed Doriani's prototype instead of adding this hard cap. Weird. Weird. But then this also means that you can only lower the enemy's resistance by 100, right? That's crazy, man. So you have to do penetration instead of just lowering the enemy's resistance. Either way. Really, 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 really huge. Really insane. So much stuff. There's so much going on here. Uh, we still need the Atlas passive tree. We need the normal POB. Um, there's obviously a bunch of stuff. A lot of questions we have. If we don't know how a lot of this stuff works. What the best ways of a lot of this is going to be. But what I do know is. This shit's fucking sick, man. Either way. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for hanging hanging out i hope i'm glad i could bring this to you uh i hope you enjoyed my uh presentation my take on it hope you learned something today if you guys did if you took anything away from this if you enjoyed this at all if you uh like the videos hey hit that like button thank you guys so much for the support i really appreciate it thank you so much for liking the video let's try to get 120 likes and uh thank you guys so much thank you guys for all the support thank you to anyone new who joins the uh, the YouTube, the gamers of the Game Report, subscribe, hit that bell, hit that bell, get extra notifications so you don't miss out on the upcoming, all these guides and new stuff for the new season. It's going to be absolutely insane. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!